Hello, everybody. So we are here once again to talk about the goodness of God, to talk about the goodness of the Lord. So <laughs> let us speak about the goodness of Jesus. Um, if you're watching this today, then share this post, tag your friends in the comments, because today we are speaking and I will be speaking to the young people and I will be speaking to, especially to the youth and talking about common common struggles as you serve Jesus as a teenager or as a young person. I am, um, or this topic um, is about perseverance, to finish the race, to fight the good fight of faith, even in the middle of difficulties, even in the midst of confusion and pain. I am here to speak today. The Holy Spirit will speak to each and every single one watching that Jesus is almost coming back and that if you are not serious in your service towards Christ, if you are not serious in your service before the Lord, then you should get things right with God. Because if until now you are a young person or you are serving Christ in ministry, or if you are serving Jesus and yet still not doing it with all of your heart, still not taking it seriously, then there is definitely a problem with that. And this is a topic that is really, really such an awakening for each and every single one of us. It is an awakening for us to, to come back to our first love. So hello everyone watching once again. Um, tag your friends in the comments, um, especially young people. Tag young people in the comments. Backsliders, lukewarm Christians. This, this message is more on for young people who are childish in their faith. Young people who are childish as they walk with the Lord. So tag your friends, share this post, send this in your group chats because this message could really awaken a lot of people. Mayong gabi, kaninyong tanan. Good evening, everybody. Um, the Lord is moving once again. So I see there are 283 people. So let's get, let's get this up. Let's get this up, everyone, so that everyone could be able to listen to the message that Jesus is going to relay upon each and every single one today. And we, um, we recently just did a deliverance conference. Many young people, many people have been set free from the yoke of slavery. Praise God. I also posted some on my story and my dad posted pictures and photos as well. Praise Jesus for the for the very wonderful move. And if ever there are young people watching from from those who joined um, the deliverance conference, then I would like to greet everyone. Praise God. It was such a wonderful experience. And I really do hope that I would not just see them, but all of you guys as well. Um, it, it was such a, an amazing and memorable moment to see young people gathered together. And it is definitely held close inside my heart. And I really do hope that each and every single one watching, I would get to meet, we would get to speak about God all day long, all night long, speaking about the goodness of Jesus. Amen. There are 365 people viewing this now. Praise the Lord. Yes, I see people tagging their friends in the comments. I see people sharing the posts as well. This is about the message of the gospel. So uh, we should not be ashamed of the word. So share this post. Tag your friends, church friends, youth. Come on. We are so pumped up to, to post about memes and post about youth stuff on, on Facebook. Facebook, but now is a time wherein we would speak about the goodness of Jesus. Jesus is Lord to speak about the goodness of God. So share this post, tag your friends, send this in your group chats. And are you ready to listen to the word that Jesus is giving us today? If you're ready, then comment down below. Amen. Because this word would definitely rebuke us, guide us, and lead us. So before we begin, I would like to open this with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you for the time, Father, that we are able to listen to your word once again. Lord, I pray that every word uttered out of my lips, Father, would be yours, Lord God. Guide me and lead me, and each and every single one watching, Father, would get to listen, understand, and apply every word, Lord God, that they would be rebuked, equipped, and edified, and reminded, Father. Jesus, I pray that your spirit, Father, would move, oh God. Seal this with your most precious blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this preaching that, um, or this thing that I'm going to share today is actually for believers or for lukewarm Christians, for lukewarm believers, for believers who are half foot in, half foot out, for people who go to church on Sunday, but on Mondays they do things that 
aren't glorifying for God. For believers who serve Christ, who worship lead in the church and yet don't even have a prayer life. For believers who go to ministries and don't even read the word, this is for you. And I hope that you won't take this in a bad way, but take this in a good way. That there is still time to change the road that you are walking on. And Jesus is speaking to you. God is speaking to you today to come back into the right path. Come back into the right lane because maybe you have drifted away from the presence of God. You you are you are you think that you are saved because you are doing good works inside of the church, but in reality, your faith is childish and not childlike. And and your walk in Christ is not the walk that God wants you to do. So that is what we are going to be talking about. Dear youth, a call to persevere. We need to persevere. As we serve the Lord, when we had made that decision that I would leave behind sin, I would leave behind the worthless deeds, deeds of darkness, I would leave behind the world. When we made that decision, decision that I have decided to follow Jesus. This is a very, very famous song. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. As you made that decision, when you made that decision to follow Christ, to leave behind everything in the world, to leave behind the things of the world and follow Jesus, you should not turn back. You should not turn back. As a believer in Jesus Christ, you run a race. We run a race as we serve the Lord. And the Bible says, I run with purpose in every step. I will be trying to speak slower so that everyone can really understand. So I run with purpose in every step. The Bible says, as a believer in Jesus, you run a race. You run a race. Each and every single one of us watching today, if you are serving the Lord, then we run a race. You run a race. It is too a race of a lifetime. As we serve Jesus, it is a race of a lifetime. You have a beginning. You begin that race. You cannot end that race. It is not allowed that you will only serve God just for a year, just for one month, just for one day, because there is no deadline when you serve Christ. There is a starting point, but you cannot finish because even after we die, we will still be serving Christ for eternity. And here on earth, we are called to finish this race. As a believer in Jesus, this race we should finish. It is a race of a lifetime and you cannot stop in the Middle. You cannot say, oh, I have been serving Jesus for one year. Now I can take a break. Oh, I have been serving Jesus for two years. Now I can take a break. When you serve Christ as a believer in Jesus Christ, this race you run, it is a race of a lifetime and you must finish it. Ezekiel 18, 24 says, however, if righteous people turn from their righteous behavior and start doing sinful things and act like other sinners, should they be allowed to live? No, of course not. All their righteous acts will be forgotten and they will die for their sins. If you are a righteous person, people who have drifted away from the presence of Jesus, I'm talking to you this evening. If you were a righteous person, serving in ministry, loving Jesus, and yet you stopped in the middle, the Bible says all the righteous acts will be forgotten and they will die for their sins. Why are you stopping in the middle of the race as we run this race in Jesus? As we run the race, we are called to, to, to run this race of a lifetime. If you stop in the middle, then all your righteous acts will be forgotten. Church, the world has a strategic way of getting us down. The world really does have a strategic way of getting us down. Especially as young people, there are temptations all around. Social media, friendships, um, relationships. Temptations are all around us. It fills us with distraction, temptation, entertainment, promising us happiness, but never fully delivering. You think that you, you are happy, but in reality, you are depressed. You think that you are free, but in reality, you are imprisoned. You think that you are delivered, but in reality, you are condemned. You think that when you do the things of the world, such as indulging in worldliness, drinking alcohol and partying here and there, you think that that is freedom, but in reality, you are being chained because the world has a very strategic way of tempting us. The world has a strategic way of pulling us away from the presence of God. And as young people, why aren't we guarding? Why are we just 
getting into temptation than saying sorry on Sundays, doing this on Mondays, and then worshiping on Sundays? Do you think that this is the kind of offering that is glorifying before Jesus? We young people, church, I'm speaking to especially 643 people watching. Wow, that's that's amazing. I'm speaking to you guys. It is not allowed that you are just serving Christ on Sunday and on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. That's the limitation of your service before Christ. But on Mondays, on Thursdays, on Fridays, why aren't you living out holiness? As Christians, we are not simply called to put our faith in Christ at a moment in time. Once again, as Christians, we are not simply called to put our faith in Christ in a moment in time. We are called to persevere. It's not just one year service for God and that's enough. Five year service for Christ and that's enough. We are called to persevere, church. We are called to finish this race. We are called to persevere. Persevere, everyone. Finish this race. You say that you start. You say that I have been a believer for a year. But if you stop in between, then that is useless. We are called to persevere. Well, in fact, if you have served Christ, if you knew the truth, if you know the truth, and yet you have stopped halfway, you have stopped serving Jesus halfway, I'm telling you, your punishment in the place of torment is way more because you know the truth. You know the word. You know what's right. You know what's wrong. You know sin. You know what's not sin. And you're doing the very thing, the very reason why Christ died. You are doing sin and your punishment is greater because the Bible says the servant who knows what he ought to do and not do it will have greater blows. So if you did not finish the race, if you did not finish the race of Christ and say, I have been serving for a year, I can do this now. I can do that now. I'm telling you that you cannot because your punishment will be more because you know what's right you know what's wrong you know what you have to do but you're not doing it and and we are called to persevere don't put your faith in Christ just in a moment in time just in a moment in time just for a year just for two months and you say that's enough just for five months and you say that's enough we are called to persevere persistence church persistence persistence the lord i will not let go jesus i will not let go i will finish this race i will finish this race i will fight the good fight of faith persistence is crucial because god has not promised you an easy life and if you have heard, you might have heard a preacher or a pastor promise you an easy life if you accepted Christ, but God never made such a guarantee that your life would be easy. That when you serve Christ, you would be walking on a bed of roses. That it would be very, very easy and just walk in such a straight line. Yes, your life will be the best when you serve Jesus. Don't get me wrong. Your life will be the best, the best ever because you have experienced freedom. You have experienced joy that you couldn't see in the world, but it certainly is not easy. I firmly believe that if you accept Christ as your savior, your life will be the best, but it, this does not imply that it will be easy. Once again, I firmly believe that if you accept Christ as your savior, your life will be the best. But this doesn't imply that it will be easy. So if you have heard people say, serve Christ and your life will be easy. Serve Christ and you will be rich. Serve Christ and you will be this, that. Your life will be easy. Your life will be easy. You will not be walking on a bed of roses when you serve Christ. In some ways, it might be even more difficult. It might be even more harder. But don't get me wrong once again, your life will be the best because there you can experience true joy and true freedom. But in some ways, your life will definitely become more challenging and it is not easy. The Bible says, um, if you guys know the verse, then comment it down below because this is a fellowship. Um, you need to count the cost. Count the cost. There is sin, temptation, persecution, crucifixion of your flesh, crucifixion of your desires, these things we do, 
these things we do as we serve Christ. And it certainly is not easy. I saw someone comment here, praise God, four years. And I'm and still serving Christ. Praise God. So if you have been serving Jesus for four years, then you should be crucifying yourself for four years as well. Daily. Repenting daily. And it is cer- it certainly is not easy when you preach about the truth. When you preach about the truth of the message of the gospel and people are laughing at you. People are mocking at you. Saying that you are crazy. Saying that you are this and you are that. It hurts us. And it certainly is not easy because daily sin faces us. Daily temptations are there. Daily Satan than offers things of the world and certainly it is not easy it is not an easy life but it is the best life that you are going to have you know serving Jesus is a decision I have decided to follow Jesus serving Jesus is a decision and there is no turning back there is no turning back church there is no turning back if you were if you were a believer and you turned back from your faith come back into the presence of Jesus before it's too late because a time will come when it's going to be too late a time will come when you will say that I wish I hope I listened to my pastors I hope I've come back into the arms of Jesus but it will be too late but if you are watching this today and you have gone away from the presence of God then come back come back into the arms of Jesus come back into the embrace of Jesus because if you are gonna wait until it's too late there is no chance after in hell a lot of people in hell are hoping for another chance to repent while here you are throwing away those chances repent church for the kingdom of God is near serving Jesus is a decision serving Jesus is a decision and there is no turning back there is no turning back as you serve the Lord church even in problems even in persecution even in temptations even in sin there is no turning back but why young people why are you so why is it so easy for you to let go of Jesus young people I'm speaking to you today why are you why is it so easy for you to let go of God have you forgotten about your road to Damascus Have you forgotten about your testimony? Have you forgotten about the time when Jesus saved you in the midst of your sin? In the midst of your depression? In the midst of your oppression? Youth! Only in events! That's the time when you're so fired for God! When there is a youth camp, when there are events such as thanksgivings or events in the church, youth camps, some youth explosions, youth, youth, um, youth events, that's the only time when you're on fire for God? But after those events, where are you? That is not serving Christ, youth. When you're only on fire in events, when you're only on fire on, 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 if there are, if there are fun things to do, if there are games, but in problems, in hard times, you would let go? (laughs) Not allowed. It's not okay that you would just serve Christ in that sense, in that way, only in youth camps, jumping and singing for joy, but in the midst of, of difficulties, in the midst of, of, of hardships. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you, young people? Where are you in times of temptations, in times of persecutions? Where are you? Why did you let go? Why are you letting go so quickly? But when someone says there is a youth camp here, when someone says there is Thanksgiving here, when someone says there is events here, why are you so quick? Why are you so quick? But when someone says read the word daily, have a prayer life daily, did stop doing sin, stop dancing on TikTok to the worthless on the while doing worthless deeds of darkness, why can't you stop? Because it's not just fun and games. Yes, serving Jesus is not boring. But if you are just serving, if there is a youth camp, if you are just serving, if the, if your friends are there, then that's not true surrender. That's not true surrender, youth. I, I'm, I'm pointing this out to the young people because this is what I have observed as well. And it is not right. It is not right for you to just serve in youth camps for three days. For three days, overnight, jumping, singing for joy. But after that camp, do you have your prayer life? After that camp, are you reading the word? After that camp, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Do you have that intimacy with Jesus? Proverbs 24 10 says, If you falter in a time of trouble, how small is your strength? How small is your strength? If only you are on fire 
in camps, if only you are on fire in events, how small is your strength if you let go of Jesus in times of difficulties? How small is your strength when you let go of Jesus in times of persecution, pain, and, 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 and hardships? How small is your strength, young people? How small is your strength? And I am here. We are here. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm rebuking you today. How small is your strength? Is, that, is it that easy for you to let go of Christ? Is it that easy for you to forget what Jesus did on that cross? Because if you forget about your testimony, I'm, I'm, um, I want to point this out, that if you forget about your testimony, then it's so easy for you to let go. If you forget about the reason why you served Jesus in the first place, it's so easy for you to let go. It will be so easy. Judas, will you trade Jesus for 30 pieces of silver? But you traded him for mobile legends, traded him for alcohol, traded him for worldly friends, traded him for the pleasures, desires of the world that are only fleeting. And you even say, why did Judas, why did Judas betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver? And yet you even betrayed him just for, just to do worthless deeds of darkness, the worthless deeds of darkness. Young people, wake up. Is what you're living for worth Christ dying for? The temporary pleasures and desires of this world, is it worth it? Everything is fleeting. Everything is temporary. Did you forget about your testimony? The time when Jesus saved you? The time when you cried out to Jesus and He saved you and He pulled you out from the darkness and He pulled you out from the pits of fear, depression, and shame? Did you, will you let go of that? Will you let go of that? You're not serious with your service before Christ. And Jesus was serious when he died on the cross for our sins. Jesus was serious when he when he when he did that all for us. And why aren't you serious? Why aren't you serious in your service before Jesus? Do you think that serving Jesus only in youth camps, only in, in events, you think that that is serious? And after, you're gonna forget about it? And after, you're gonna forget about everything you jump and come back into the deeds of the world? Young people, is this what you want to be doing when Christ comes back? Is this what you want to be doing when Christ comes back? If you're watching this today and it hurts your heart, it hurts your heart. The gun kung nabasa banga. Igo ko. Igo ka I, I see a lot of comments saying that the word has really pierced my heart. Ask yourself Is this what you want to be doing when Christ comes back? Worship leading on Sunday? Going to bars on Monday? Worship leading on Wednesday? Singing worldly songs the next day? Glorifying God on Sunday? But going to parties? worldly things on is this what you want to be doing when Christ comes back is this what you want to be doing when Christ comes back you see following Jesus is a lifetime commitment following Jesus is really a commitment I saw someone comment down below commitment amen following Jesus is a lifetime commitment regardless of the difficulties Regardless of the opposition you may experience along the journey, you are commanded to fix your face on the goal and never look back. Never look back. You are commanded to never look back. Regardless of the difficulties, regardless of the struggles, regardless of the struggles in temptation, struggles in sin, you should never look back, church. You should never look back. We need persistence persistence that I will not let go of Jesus persistence that I will finish this race persistence that I will fight the good fight of faith persistence that I will serve Christ as long as I live until my last breath until the day I die to live if I live I live for the Lord and if I die I die for the Lord stop saying I'm too young teenagers okay you may say that I really didn't say in the literal sense I'm too young but by your actions, you're showing it. I'm too young. I'm just a teen. But being a teen or being young doesn't give you an excuse to have a childish attitude in serving Christ. Young people, stop being childish. Stop being childish. Stop. Stop. Childlike. We are called to be childlike 
and not childish. We are called to be childlike and not childish. Being on fire on youth camps and, and going back to the world, that's childish and not childlike. Stop being childish. Stop saying I'm too young. This is normal for teenagers. It's normal to be this and be that. No. No. Stop being childish. Stop being childish. Why is childish faith in young people normalized? The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4.12, Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, in your faith, and in your purity. Be an example. Even if you are young, be an example. But why is childish faith normalized in the young people? Why is childish faith normalized in the youth? People say, oh, that's okay because it's still a youth. Oh, that's just okay because it's still a youth. Well, no, it's not okay. Sulking. Um, um, when you're only on fire in youth events. Do you know what sulking means? In Visaya, it's luuran ba? When someone, ah, kanang, you always tampo. Tampo, when someone rebukes you, you will no longer listen to that person. You will no longer talk to that person. Luuran, hilig ka mang luod. You are sulking. When someone tells you about the truth, when someone speaks about the truth, you will no longer talk to them. And that is childish. That is not normal behavior in the young people. If you, if you were not the worship leader on Sunday, and then you would not talk to your pastors anymore, you would not talk to your leaders anymore, you would not talk to your church friends anymore, that is childish behavior, and that should not be tolerated even if you are young. Even when you are young, that should never be tolerated, church. We are called to be childlike and not childish, and I would rebuke you today because if you are still doing that, and if someone rebukes you in the next day, you would no longer talk to that person. Well, that is not okay. That is really not okay. It is not okay. Stop saying it's okay because he's a young person. It's okay because he's still young. Train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old, he shall not depart from it. The Bible says, for it is for it is good uh, for people to submit at a young age to the yoke of discipline. Stop saying you're too young. Because childish behavior, we are called to be childlike and not childish. Stop saying I'm too young. Stop saying I'm just part of the youth. Bible says, be an example. I'm talking to Timothy's here today. Young people, young people who are serving Christ, leaders, be an example. Be an example. Be an example. Can, you, can everyone comment down below? Be an example. Be an example. And I have a question for you guys today. If the younger generation are following your footsteps in, follow, in serving Christ, would they be a Timothy or a Eutychus? Timothy on fire for serving Christ. Timothy standing up for the truth. Or a Eutychus, sleeping when the preacher is preaching. No prayer life, no this, no that. Just serving Christ in youth camps. Just serving Christ in, in, in youth services. Be an example. Be an example in all the believers. The Bible says, be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, in your faith, and your purity. If the younger generation are following your footsteps, how would they be serving Christ? Would they, would they be serving Christ in a biblical manner or in a lazy manner, just like what most of the youth are doing? In a lazy manner that, okay, I will just repent on Sunday. I will sin on Monday because God is forgiving. I will repent on Sunday. But in reality, no. We must live a holy life each and every single day, even if it's Monday, even if it's Sunday, even in your own room, even when no one is watching in your own room, you must pray, you must surrender, you must read the word because it is a relationship, not just an endorsement, not just an endorsement that posting on Facebook, posting on this one, posting on that one, but there is no relationship. It is a relationship. Young people, be awake. Wake up. Wake up because there is still time to change the road that you are walking on. There is still time. If you're walking in a childish manner, and if you're watching this today and you're a youth leader, now is the time to be a leader and not just a 
the barkada. Now is the time to be a leader, to be a strong person, a strong uh, a man in faith, a woman in faith. Na will stand firm for the word of Christ, will stand up for the truth, will stand up for righteousness, being an example, being an example, be an example. And a lot of people, they get tired of waiting for Christ. A lot of people, they get tired of waiting and it breaks my heart to see people who were very on fire for God, who traded their, their calling for the things of the world, who traded their calling just to have work, who traded their calling just to be famous, who traded their calling just to have this just to have that and and it is not right if we continue serving Christ in such a childish manner it is not right we need to we need to wake up young people we need to wake up even at our age today we need to wake up and be an example for all believers everywhere waiting upon the Lord and don't be tired to wait for the Lord remember remember everything he did for you the reason why a lot of people get tired in waiting for Christ is because they forgot about their testimony they forgot about the road to Damascus. They forgot about the time when Jesus saved you. Uh, reminisce today. Remember today about the time, that time when you were in that room crying, when you were in that room surrendering to Jesus, when you were in that room calling upon the name of the Lord, when you were in that room crying out to Jesus. Remember that time. Remember the time. Remember it all. When you were saying, Lord, forgive me. Why? Why is it so easy for you to let go? Why is it so easy for you to forget about everything? So that is it? You would trade it all just for the basketball? That is it? You would trade it all just for fame? That is it? You would trade it all for the things and pleasures of the world? Did you forget about the things He did for you? Did you forget about the times when you were all alone yet Jesus was there for you? Why would you leave behind Jesus? Why would you leave behind everything, everything that you have in Christ and get the pleasures and desires of this world? Why would you trade your birthright just for food? Why would you trade it all just for the things, pleasures, desires of this world that are passing, that are temporary, that are fleeting, that are not even eternal. Church, don't trade Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Don't trade Jesus just to pursue the things, pleasures, desires of this world. No, no, no. If you were, if you backslided from the presence of God and you're watching this today, come back once again because a time will come when it is too late. You may think that your leaders are very noisy saying, repent, repent, repent. But in reality, when you are now in the fiery furnaces of hell, you will be looking for the word repent. You will be wishing to hear the word repent. And repent now while it is not yet too late. So I'm telling you, even if you are inside the church, even if you are inside the church, being inside the church doesn't mean that you are with Christ. You may have a relationship, but you have an intimacy. A husband and wife can have a relationship, but there can be no intimacy with them. They can be beside each other, but they feel so far away from each other. So church, bring back that fire. Bring back that fire, not just in youth camps. If you are only serving Jesus in youth camps, if you are only serving Jesus in events, then I'm telling you, you cannot finish the race. If your faith in Christ is just up to that, you cannot finish the race if your faith in Christ is only up to youth camps and events. No, you cannot. It takes a commitment. It takes surrender. Reading your Bible in your room crying in midnight lord thank you remembering the deeds he did for you you forget did you forget that road did you forget about the time when he saved you did you forget about the time remember that remember that that is why when you worship on sunday you feel so far from the presence of god you feel so far you are inside the church but you're so far away from jesus you are inside within the premises of the four cornered walls of your church but you feel so far away you see people crying but why can't you cry you see people worshiping yes you raise up your hands you try to pray but why can't you pray because you are not taking it seriously you are not taking it seriously and you can you are not taking it seriously and we need to take it seriously seriously church Jesus is almost coming back. And if you're not serious in your faith, you will be left behind. You will be left behind. And what hurts? You lived an almost Christian life. Almost going into heaven. 
almost having your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But almost is not enough. So, get serious. Get right. A lot of people get tired of waiting. Get tired of waiting upon the Lord. Get tired of waiting for Jesus. Get tired of waiting until Jesus returns and so they let go. After one year of service, they let go. And I'm telling you, serving God, such a wonderful thing. The best thing. Silver nor gold cannot pay. A lot of people get tired of waiting upon the promise of God. Well, I'm telling you, 40 years old, Caleb was 40 years old when God promised him something. Once again, if you have read this in the book of, um, I believe it was Numbers, Caleb was 40 years old when God promised him the land. But when Caleb was 40 years old, he did not get the promise right away. But even 45 years later, Caleb still waited. Imagine 45 years. Caleb waited for 45 years. And I believe in those 45 years, there were ups, there were downs, there was pain, there were tears, there was sweat, there was, there was um, um, downfalls, there was happiness, there was sadness. In the midst of those, in the, in the timeline of 45 years, 45 years is a long time. Caleb waited for 45 years. In those 45 years, there were ups and downs, there were pain, there was happiness, there was brokenness, there was joy, there was times when I believe Caleb, Caleb was questioning, Caleb was... But you know, it's not about the waiting. It's about the way you wait. It's not about the waiting. It's what you do when you wait. It's what you do when you wait. Do you worship? Do you pray? Do you fast? And a lot of people forget, or a lot of people do not have the perseverance to wait. Because while they wait, they do not do. While they wait, they don't have action. They just wait. They just wait. But there's no prayer life. There's no worship. There's no fasting. There's no reading of the word. Because a lot of people say that when you wait, you will get weaker and weaker. No. In fact, when you wait, when you wait, like truthfully wait, when you wholeheartedly wait, you will not be weaker, but you will be stronger. In times of hardships, you will stand because you are persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. And that's the sad thing nowadays. People think that when you wait, you will get weaker and weaker by the day, but no. In fact, when you wait, you will become stronger. You will become more passionate. You will become more in love with Christ. Because once again, it's not about the waiting nor the timeline of, the, of, the, of how long you wait. It's about what you do when you wait. And when you love Christ, 45 years would just seem like a few days. It's about what you do when you wait, church. If you are waiting upon the Lord, waiting for Christ's return or waiting for something and you are tired, what do you do while you're waiting? What are you doing while you're waiting? You know, I know that a lot of people today have been rebuked. A lot of people today have been reminded. And a lot of people are watching today, 671 viewers. There, there were 700 a while ago. Praise God, 700 people listening to the word of Jesus. Glory to God. But God is speaking to you that you should come back. God is speaking to you that you should call upon His name once again. You should call upon His name once again. Stop your childish behavior. Stop your childish actions. Stop your childish way of thinking. Stop. Amen. It's not about the waiting. It's about the way you wait. You know, while God doesn't guarantee an easy life for us, He does guarantee His presence. You know, yes, persecution, struggles, that will come. That will really come. I myself have been facing persecutions, struggles, pain, um, hardships as I serve the Lord, but... He does guarantee His presence. He did say that He will be with us. So don't let go. Don't let go when times get hard. Don't let go when times get difficult. But finish the race. You know, I would emphasize that being a Christian, 
won't always make your life easier because pain will come, persecutions will come, but it will be the best. It will be the best. If you have served Christ and you let go of that, you let go of your relationship with Him, it's heavy, right? Doing the worthless deeds of darkness, it's heavy, right? I know deep inside your room, if you are a backslider, or if you have gone away from the presence of God, I know deep inside your room, or if you are in the church but you are not in Christ, I know that in your room, you you want to be filled. You want something. There's something missing. Because you already received it once. But you let go of it. But whether you are Christian or not, you will face difficulties in life. So why not face them with God on your side? Once again, whether you are Christian or not, you will face difficulties in life. So why not face them with God by your side? Remember, Romans 8.31 says, What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? You know, there are a lot of things in life that are bigger than you. And I know that pain will come. This is a call to persevere. Finish this race. Finish this race. You know, every tear that you cried out, if you're struggling, you know, don't let go in times of struggles. There are a lot of things in life that are bigger than you. But you can take comfort in the fact that nothing is bigger than God. So, Bible says in Isaiah 26 verse 4, Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. So, let go don't let go don't let go if you're facing struggles today a while ago i spoke about um about childish behavior but now i'm speaking to people watching who are persevering even in the midst of pain if today you're persecuted if if today you're persevering even in the midst of pain and persecution i would like to encourage you continue persecution in your family just continue just continue if tears are if you're if you're crying while watching God is speaking to you. This is not just me. But Luke 12, 12. Persevere. Finish this race. The Bible says in Proverbs 17, verse 3. Fire tests the purity of silver and gold, but the Lord tests the heart. Once again, fire tests the purity of silver and gold, but the Lord tests the heart. When you go through difficulties in life, it's like gold being tested by fire. To uncover all impurities and melt them away. To determine what is real and what is fake, you put it through a fire. That's how gold is to determine when it is real or when it is fake. You put it through a fire. You see, trials in life might occasionally make you feel as though you are walking through fire. When that happens, we need to keep in mind that we are expected to persevere. And one of the rewards of perseverance even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of difficulties, it proves that your faith is genuine. Lord, even if I am all alone, Lord, even if even if people are persecuting me here and there, saying that I am crazy, saying that I am this, saying that I am that, persevere. If you persevere, it proves that your faith is genuine. Remember, the Bible says, James 1, 2-4, a very common verse. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it as an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. You see, we don't rejoice just in trials themselves because trials are really painful. I know, trials are painful. It hurts. Maybe you have been crying in your room for years now because because your family has been persecuting you because of your service before the Lord. But remember, as Christians, we may rejoice in the trials we face because of the results they produce in us. Without those trials, you know, there also wouldn't be the triumph. So, you develop character in the trials of your life as you persevere and as you become mature. So don't let go. If you are watching this today and you, f- you feel like letting go, don't let go. Don't let go. Because if you let go, things will not be better. Things will be worse. Everything you need is found in Jesus. 
everything you need is found in Jesus, so don't let go. Don't let go. Remember, Matthew 24 verse 13 says, But the one who endures to the end will be saved. You will be saved if you endure. But if you don't endure, if you stop halfway, you will not be saved. Endure, church. Remember, the end of the matter is better than its beginning. If you you have served Christ in the beginning, and yet you have not finished, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 7-8, finishing is better than starting. If you have started and not finished, then I'm sorry. But finishing is better than starting. And the last has become the first, and the first has become the last. But I'm telling you, it's not yet too late. It's not yet too late. Don't allow yourself to say, na, don't allow yourself to say that, oh, before I was like this, before I was like that, before I was a pastor, before I was a worship leader. Don't allow yourself to say that. But, but even until now, even at your age today, even how many years you have been serving Christ you don't just say before I was a worship leader until now I am a worship leader until now I am serving Christ until now I am still running the race and don't forget about that road road to Damascus I am really really emphasizing your testimony because if you forget about that then it's too easy for you to let go because you forgot about the reason in the first place you forgot about the purpose in the first place so let's finish this together. 657 people, let's finish this together. If you're watching this, let's finish this race together. Let's, let's meet in heaven one day. Don't stop halfway. What were all your prayers for if you stop now? How about your family who will preach to them if you stop now? How about your friends who will stand up for the truth if you stop now? How about your loved ones? How will they know if you don't stand up if you stop now? How about your prayers if you stop now? For what? For what? So I would like to encourage you. To all Bisaya people watching para sa asang imong giampo kung imuundang kakarun. For everyone watching, you have already started. Why stop now? You have seen deliverance. You have seen freedom. You have seen people being set free from the from the yoke of the enemy. You have seen it in your life as well. So why let go now? Don't you know? Or have you forgotten? Have you forgotten about everything he has done? If you let go now, church, then maybe you have forgotten about it. Maybe you have forgotten about the time when Jesus saved you. And don't ever forget about that. Because if you forget about the reason, then everything else would be an obligation. Serving Jesus would no longer be a willful surrender for you, but an obligation. If you forget about your testimony, if you forget about the reason. So remember that. So everyone watching now, let's just say, God, Lord Jesus, pull me closer. Closer to your heart, Lord. I want to know you more. Everyone watching this today, just put the phone down. Listen to the voice of God. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. I see a lot of crying emojis. If you're watching this and are crying, it's okay. It's okay. God is God is speaking right now. God is speaking right now. Come on, just worship the name of Jesus. Just speak to God. Each and every single one watching, speak to God. Don't say, oh, it's just online. No, because God can move even. Persevere. Persevere. Why let go? It's not worth it. Letting go of Jesus just for parties, it's not worth it. Letting go of Jesus just for worldly friends, it's not worth it. There are friends inside the church. Friends who do not destroy each other. Friends who are closer than a brother. So I want to just put the phone down and just worship the name of Jesus. Remember of, remember the first love. Remember the first love. You know, as Jesus was taking his last breath, he was thinking of you. He was thinking of you. But every time you do your sin, why aren't you thinking of him? Once again, 
Jesus was thinking of you upon every stripe upon his back. But every time you do, you watch pornography, every time you speak bad words, why aren't you thinking of him? He was betrayed. He was God. He had endured it all for you and I, for you and me. And not all you will let go. Not all you will let go. Don't let go. Is what you're living for worth Christ dying for? So come on, just worship the name of Jesus this this evening. I know this is just a short sermon, but I hope that everyone was reminded. Everyone was reminded of sin, of childish behavior. No, stop it, stop it. It breaks my heart to see young people only serving in youth camps, but in the times of difficulties, they let go. Now is the time that we will not let go anymore. Lift up your hands in worship. Cry out and surrender. Just say it all. Weep. Rejoice. Come on, just worship. closer to God. The Bible says, come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. James 4, 8 says. So, just worship. Just worship. The presence of God is here. The presence of God is here. Just cry it out. Just cry it all out before Jesus. So pull me a little closer. 
presence of God is really heavily felt. I see your comments. And if you say that the word is piercing you today, then I hope that you would really apply it. Not just by lips, not just by words, but through your actions. Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. The Bible says in Matthew 3, 8. So from now on, leave it all behind. From now on, leave it all behind. I see a lot of people plugging their friends who were away from the presence of God. And I also have many friends who have drifted away from the presence of Jesus. So I'm telling you guys, come back. If it breaks the heart of your brethren, how much more the heart of your Savior? Come back because there will be a time when it's too late. And while it's not yet too late, come back. Come back, church, because once again, a time will come when there will no longer be people who would say repent. A time will come when judgment will fall upon you. So take it seriously. Believers who are inside the church, take it seriously. If you know the song, then let us sing this all together. Lift up your hands in worship. Just surrender to Jesus this evening. Actually, a lot of people watch this live today because usually people who are watching just um, around 300 to 400. But today's um, 700. We reached 700. Praise God. 
Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. All glory belongs to Jesus alone. Amen. If you are rebuked, if you are reminded, I see a lot of people tagging their friends. Praise God because that is that is also a way of, of evangelism as well. Sharing the word of God. If you guys haven't liked this page yet, um, then like this. I do encourage you to like because... Um, we post a lot of preachings and um, especially for the young people, struggles, how to overcome them, advices because um, in the last days, we really do need to um, help each other, encourage one another and build each other up just as what we are doing today. So once again, I would like to give a shout out to all people, all young people who joined the Deliverance Conference on, on July, last July 19 to July 20. Such a fiery experience and even here in our home, we had the fellowship as well. Glory to God. One of a very memorable experience as well. And once again, I really hope to see and to meet each and every single one of you. Not just um, people who I've met already, but people who I haven't met yet. I really do want to have a fellowship with each and every single one. And once again, I'm not just saying this, just mere words, but from the bottom of my heart, I really do want to have a fellowship with each and every single one of you. And I really do want to meet you guys one day, God willingly. Praise Jesus. So comment down below where you are watching. Before we end this live, um, I think let's give around two minutes to say hello to our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ so where, where you are watching. Um, glory to God. Um, once again, share this post um, to reach people, especially believers inside the church who have been sleeping in their faith in Christ. Mayong gabi isad. Praise God. Praise Jesus because you are watching this today. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to God. I see a lot of people um, commenting down below, crying emojis. The, the word really pierced you today, huh? Yeah, that is the word that God is bringing you. That This is the word that God is sending you. I am rebuked. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You are rebuked. So now is the time to come back into the right path. Watching from Dumaguete. Hello, everyone. Watching from Dumaguete. Actually, um... I also have I um we also have a home in Dumaguete as well. Our yeah. Um watching from the Pitan City. Hello, hello po. Watching from New York. Wow, praise God. That is a new one. Glory to God. Watching from Tarlac, Cebu. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Though we are far away, we are in one river, one body in Christ. Let us finish this race. All together, no turning back in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. No turning back. Let us run this race together, brethren. Let us finish this race together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Guys, I want to speak to each and every single one once again that um, especially in, in these last days, each and every single one of us can preach. So don't be ashamed to preach. Don't be ashamed to Get out a camera or go in the streets and go to your families and your friends and say Jesus is alive because um, the God's, God can work through each and every single one of us and not just through me. Watching from Nueva Ecija, from South Cotabato. Hello, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Greet all. Greet your brethren as well in the comment section because we here are a family. Everyone watching, praise God, we are a family. Uh, watching from Rizal. Wow. Thank you. I really need these words. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I know that the Holy Spirit prompted you to watch this today to remind you to redirect you into the right path. Watching from Saudi Arabia. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. Hello, everyone. So, oh, sorry, guys. I am blessed, rebuked, and reminded. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word and thanks for your life. Praise Jesus. Finish the race. Finish the race. Watching from Pampanga. Glory to God. From Bukidnon. We also have a place in Bukidnon as well. Hope to see you soon, everybody. So once again, um, like this page. Continue to follow follow Christ. Read the word daily. Have a prayer life. I hope to see each and every single one soon. God bless and shalom.